Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. When Mr. Krabs is accused of stealing King Neptune's crown, SpongeBob and Patrick must embark on a dangerous journey to the Shell City, facing huge abyssal fish and an army of plankton zombies. Today we will recap the story of the 2004 SpongeBob SquarePants movie. In the middle of the ocean, a group of pirates is sailing through the deep waters when one of the crew members returns bringing a treasure chest. Eager to find out what they have looted, the captain opens the chest and finds something that is better than one piece, dozens of tickets to see the SpongeBob SquarePants movie at the theater. Excited, the pirates start partying as they sail to the nearest movie theater, causing a lot of chaos until everyone is seated in their seats and the movie starts. In Bikini Bottom, Mr. Krabs is about to open a second Krusty Krab franchise, and to do so, he will appoint one of his employees as manager to be in charge of one restaurant while he takes care of the other. On the day of the grand opening, the alarm clock goes off and SpongeBob wakes up quite confident that he will be promoted, because he has received the Employee of the Month award 374 times in a row. Excited, the sea sponge does her hygiene ritual and puts on her best clothes for the inauguration ceremony, but before leaving, he decides to visit Squidward to thank him for the time they have worked together. Since he is still in the shower, the grumpy squid kicks the sponge stalker out of his house, causing it to fall on the side of Patrick's house. Happy for his friend, the starfish congratulates him on his upcoming promotion and invites him, after the ceremony, to go and celebrate on the Goofy Goober's ice cream boat. Eager for the party, the friends put on the silly peanut costume and start singing the theme song of the ice cream parlor, but since he is late for the opening, SpongeBob leaves Patrick behind and runs to the Krusty Krab. Across the street, Plankton sees the ceremony they are holding and is filled with envy, for while Mr. Krabs is interviewed by all the TV stations, he has never received a single customer in his chum bucket. Frustrated, the Plankton laments that none of his plans to steal the Krabby Patty formula have worked to date, but Karen, his robot waitress, reminds him that he has never tried Plan Z, searching through his drawer. Plankton finds the folder with the latest project and is impressed at how good it is. Excited, the villain gets out of the chum bucket and starts getting excited about having a way to get the secret recipe for the Krabby Patty, but because he is distracted in the middle of the street, he ends up getting trampled by SpongeBob. Feeling something sticking to his shoe, the Krusty Krab cook begins rubbing his feet against the asphalt, flaying Plankton's skin against the ground. After apologizing to the owner of the chum bucket, the sea sponge continues on toward the opening party, where Mr. Krabs decides to start by announcing who the new manager will be. Before pointing out the promoted, the crustacean does a bit of a mystery until he finally reveals that his new manager will be Squidward, but SpongeBob was so confident that he doesn't even pay attention to what he says and runs straight to the stage, starting his thank you speech and embarrassing himself in front of the whole bikini bottom. Realizing the confusion, Mr. Krabs goes to the stage and tells him that, Although he is a great employee, SpongeBob is still too immature to take over the management of a restaurant. Extremely sad. SpongeBob leaves the ceremony and Patrick arrives soon after to congratulate his friend, but he loses control of his pants, glider and hits the Squidward poster, destroying the stage and ending the inauguration. When night falls, Plankton decides to put his plan into action and goes straight to King Neptune's castle, where the monarch initiates a royal court to sentence his official polish to 20 years in the dungeon for the crime of touching the crown, but Princess Mindy finds this ridiculous and decides to release the worker, starting an argument between father and daughter. To talk alone, King Neptune expels his subjects and removes the crown to talk about the responsibilities that a monarch must have, providing the perfect opportunity for Plankton to steal the object and escape unnoticed. Meanwhile, SpongeBob is in the ice cream parlor in tears when Patrick arrives to keep him company, but instead of celebrating as planned, they spend the evening devouring several rounds of the Gooberberry Triple Sunday to drown their sorrows. The next morning, SpongeBob wakes up hungover and goes straight to work to talk to his boss, but even before he gets there, Neptune visits the Krusty Krab looking for a certain Eugene Krabs, who, according to him, is responsible for stealing his crown. Confused, the owner of the Krusty Krab claims he is innocent, but while he tries to deny it, Plankton calls the diner in a distorted voice and begins to thank him for selling the crown, saying he sold it to a guy in Shell City. Furious, Neptune lights his trident and prepares to make roasted crab, but SpongeBob arrives just in time and says that he has some things to say about his boss. Quite upset, the inebriated Sponge says he deserved the job and starts offending the boss, saying he is mature enough and showing his tongue soon after. After the outburst, King Neptune decides to continue with his punishment of Mr. Krabs and shoots a bolt of fire from his trident, making barbecued crab. To put out the fire, Eugene jumps into a pot of water, but Neptune is still not satisfied and tries to turn him into a barbecue again, forcing SpongeBob to defend his boss. When he learns about the theft, 
The Krusty Krab chef says that it is too much to eliminate someone for a crown, and Neptune decides to show off his shiny bald head, nearly frying the eyes of the crowd and blinding SpongeBob, who finally understands why he wants the object back so badly. Still, the little yellow guy wants to save the life of his urchin and offers to personally go to the Shell City to retrieve the crown. But Neptune does not trust the sponge to complete the mission and says that he is just a boy, and reveals that no one has ever managed to return from this place alive. With her father about to roast them both, Mindy gets out of the carriage and manages to convince Neptune to give SpongeBob a vote of confidence, granting him six days to return with his crown, but freezing Eugene to make sure he won't run away until the deadline expires. Before leaving with her father, Mindy goes to Patrick and tells him about some of the dangers they will face, as well as handing over a bag of stored wind so they can return once they get their crown back. After the girl leaves, SpongeBob takes Patrick to the restaurant's garage and shows him the paddy wagon, a vehicle made entirely of hamburger that Mr. Krabs was planning to use for promotional purposes. With the edible car, the two set off for the Shell City, leaving Eugene completely alone and frozen in the restaurant. With no one to stop him, Plankton invades the Krusty Krab and steals the secret formula right in front of Mr. Krabs, who can only cry tears of ice as he watches his rival take the secret of his success. After some time driving, the two bumpkins arrive at the last gas station in the Bikini Bottom and ask them to fill up the paddy wagon, but the couple of rednecks who work there start making fun of them, calling them useless kids and asking if they want ketchup or mustard for fuel. Offended, SpongeBob replies that they are men and that they are going to get Neptune's crown in the Shell City, but since they know that a monstrous cyclops inhabits the place, the fish start laughing and say that they won't survive 10 seconds after passing through the border. Wanting to prove them wrong, SpongeBob decides to move on and crosses the line that marks the bikini bottom, but they are robbed a few meters ahead, where a criminal steals the paddy wagon. Curious, Patrick asks how many seconds have passed and one of the fish replies that it took 12 seconds, making the pair of goofy goober fans feel victorious and start laughing at the redneck workers. In the bikini bottom, all the fish start to frequent the chum bucket that now sells the beloved Krabby Patty, getting the attention of the news that are curious to know how Plankton got the formula, however, obviously he does not tell the truth and takes the opportunity to make the most drama, saying that Mr. Krabs left the secret of the burgers as an inheritance. To attract even more customers, Plankton takes the opportunity to advertise and announces that he will give a bucket helmet as a free gift to everyone who buys the Krabby Patty, handing out the accessory to customers, who have no idea that it is all part of his plan to take over the world. Excited, the bean with antennae goes to the kitchen and celebrates the fact that now no one can stop him, but Karen warns him that SpongeBob and Patrick may be able to retrieve the crown and bring it to Neptune, enabling the king to find his fingerprints on the object and eventually discover his whole plan. Extremely confident, Plankton says that Plan Z already foresaw that something like this could happen, and that is why he hired a bounty hunter named Dennis to deal with the duo of goons. Unaware that they are being hunted, the two spend the entire day walking until they find a sign that signals that they are five days away from the Shell City. However, since this deadline is by car, they need to retrieve the paddy wagon if they want to arrive in time. By coincidence, the duo finds the vehicle a few meters ahead, parked in front of a hardcore bar, but since the key is not in the ignition, Patrick plans to distract the crowd while Bob retrieves the spatula key from the fish that robbed them. Full of mischief, the starfish enters the bar and asks for a minute of everyone's attention, causing the criminals to crowd around him, but just as SpongeBob is about to retrieve the key, Patrick just asks where the bathroom is and walks away, ending the distraction and causing the thieving fish to notice the theft. To disguise this, the embarrassed sponge pretends to be looking for his contact lens and runs to the bathroom, where he starts fighting with his friend for getting his hands dirty. When he tries to clean them up, he discovers that the bottle of liquid soap is broken and making soap bubbles non-stop, allowing them to play around making endless bubbles, but one of the soap bubbles ends up escaping and ending up in the middle of the bar, where the bullies remind him of the rule that says that everyone who makes soap bubbles will be beaten to a pulp until they pass out. Desperate, the friends burst all the soap bubbles and try to sneak out, but one of the criminals notices their presence and orders everyone to form a line. With everyone in their positions, the mutant fish asks the DJ to put the Goofy Goober record on, claiming that the one who burst the bubbles is a little boy who won't be able to resist the urge to sing the song. With great effort, the two manage to hold back the urge for the first few seconds, but the urge grows stronger and stronger, until they are about to give in. But at that moment, a pair of Siamese twins next to them can't take it, and end up singing the silly peanut theme, taking the blame instead. In the midst of the confusion, the duo manages to get the spatula key and sneak out of the bar, retrieving the paddy wagon to continue their journey. The next morning, Squidward goes for a ride and realizes that everyone is wearing the chum bucket helmet. 
After finding out about the sale of the Krabby Patties, he goes to Plankton to get some answers, accusing him of stealing King Neptune's crown and all the rest. But Plankton refuses to let anyone spoil his plans and reveals the last card up his sleeve, Brain Control. As soon as he presses a button on Karen, the buckets swallow people's heads and begin to control them, turning everyone into zombies who trap the squid in a corner. Unaware that the town has been taken over, SpongeBob and Patrick keep driving until they come to a road full of skeletons, but since they are two stupid beings, neither of them realize the pile of bodies all around. A few miles down the road, they see a sign for free ice cream and decide to stop for refreshment. Excited, SpongeBob runs to the stand and orders a double sundae, but when he tries to get the ice cream, he realizes that the bowl is stuck in the lady's hands. Suddenly, the ground begins to shake and the tent completely falls apart, revealing that the saleswoman was actually the tongue of a colossal hooded fish, which starts running after them with its little stumpy leg. About to be catched, SpongeBob realizes that they are approaching a cliff and orders Patrick to jump out of the paddy wagon, leaving the fish to fall alone into the abyss and devour the burger vehicle. But before he can even begin the fall, the creature is swallowed by a colossal eel that appears from the cliff. Stunned by the size of the monster, the two finally admit they are just kids and stand there watching the abyss without the courage to continue, but Mindy shows up and tells them about what happened in the bikini bottom, leaving the pair with the responsibility of saving all their friends. Still, neither of them feels able to move on, and Mindy decides to take drastic action, trick them, pretending to use her mermaid magic to turn them into men. With their new seaweed mustache, the new heroes feel confident to continue their journey and jump off the cliff without worry, but luckily, a vine slows their fall and allows them to land safely. Feeling invincible, the sponge and the star cross the canyon past several abyssal creatures, as well as jumping through underwater volcanoes as if they were trampolines, arriving intact on the other side by some miracle, but Dennis is just ahead in the poison waiting for them. Very bravely, the Debloid duo laugh in the mercenary's face, saying that they are men now and nothing will be able to stop them, but Dennis doesn't find anything funny and pulls the kelp off their faces with extreme ease, making them realize that their mustaches were fake. Paralyzed by panic, the two just watch as Dennis prepares to trample them, however, at the last second an even bigger boot appears and crushes the bounty hunter. Relieved, SpongeBob tries to thank the boot for saving them, but soon realizes that the shoe belongs to a diver's scuba, meaning that they are facing the human known as the Cyclops of Shell City. Desperate, the friends try to run back to the abyss, but the diver manages to capture them with extreme ease, placing them in an aquarium in his marine store. As soon as they wake up, Bob and Patrick see several other fish around and try to ask for some information, but soon realize that everyone has been completely wiped out. At this point, the diver appears and removes them from the tank, putting them to dehydrate in front of a super-powered lamp. Unable to move, the two can only watch as the water from their bodies is totally drained, even breaking one of the SpongeBob's arms that is totally parched. In their final moments, the Goofy Goober fans lament that they failed in their mission, but Patrick sees King Neptune's crown on a pillow and they are happy that they got so close to their goal. Even though they are practically dehydrated, the two of them start crying and singing the peanut song until they are completely dry, but luckily their tears gather and run down the wire of the light fixture until they reach the socket, burning out the bulb and activating the smoke detector. Thanks to the water that begins to fall from the ceiling, Patrick and SpongeBob come back to life and go straight to Neptune's crown, but the diver is nearby and manages to recapture them. At that moment, the entire shell city begins to shake and the stuffed fish come back to life, beginning their revenge against the human. With the deadline about to expire, Bob and Patrick carry the crown to the beach and take the windbag back home, but the starfish doesn't hold the bag properly, causing it to fall into the middle of the sea. At this point, David Hasselhoff appears and offers to take them back home, but when they reach the halfway point, Dennis manages to catch up with them still under the Cyclops boot. In the bikini bottom, Plankton goes over to the Krusty Krab and starts teasing Eugene by saying that today is crab on a spit day. As the six-day deadline has passed, Neptune arrives at the restaurant saying that he has come in person to eliminate Mr. Krabs, but Mindy does everything she can to fool her father, buying time for her friends to return. On top of Hasselhoff, Patrick gets tired of running away and decides to confront the bounty hunter, however Dennis hits a supreme slap that causes the starfish to fly into the human's heel. Desperate, SpongeBob runs behind the actor's back and the mercenary keeps trying to catch him, even sticking his knife up David's buttocks as he tries to hit his target. Trapped, SpongeBob jumps onto the human's other leg, but this is not enough to escape and he decides to try to buy Dennis off with some discount coupons from the ice cream parlor. Obviously the mercenary doesn't accept and the yellow guy in the square pants blows bubbles that hit Dennis' eyes, 
blinding him for a few seconds and making it impossible for him to dodge as Hasselhoff passes under a sailboat, causing the mercenary to be hit hard. Hundreds of feet ahead, they finally arrive at the bikini bottom and begin the launch sequence, with Hasselhoff opening his chest to squeeze the duo with all his might into the deep end. As the countdown begins, Neptune gets tired of Mindy and decides to kick her out of the crusty crab, setting his trident on fire to finally eliminate the crab, but just as he fires, SpongeBob and Patrick are thrown in and manage to reflect the flames with King Neptune's crown, redirecting the fire exactly where Hasselhoff is floating. Happy to have his crown back, Neptune forgets about the trial and Mindy shows up to congratulate them, but Plan Z is not over yet and Plankton puts the last bucket on the head of the King of the Seas, as well as summoning his army of zombies to eliminate the trio of survivors. Totally cornered, SpongeBob begins to talk about everything he has been through on his journey and assumes that he is really just a boy, but that above all, he is a goofy goober. At that moment, the sponge awakens Rock's powers and starts singing a heavy metal version of the Silly Peanut song, unlocking mystical powers that turn him into a superpowered magician, allowing him to incinerate the buckets with the laser beams coming out of the tip of his guitar. Completely defeated by Sponge Rock Merlin, Plankton tries to escape before he is captured, but is met by a crowd of heavy metal fans who start trampling his body, leaving him more crumpled than chewed gum on asphalt. After Plankton's arrest, King Neptune assumes he was wrong and unfreezes Mr. Krabs' body, congratulating him on having such a brave employee and recommending that Eugene give the manager's job to sponge Bob Square Pants. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.